हेलो आई एम ऑडिबल ओके सर ओके सर a warm welcome and a very good evening to all dear participants resource person of today session dr neeraj agarwal sir and a chair person of today session dr uma gupta ma'am and all the organizers of this program today we are having our lecture on basic imaging sciences now i would like to introduce today's resource person guest speaker of session dr neeraj agarwal sir sir is currently working as associate professor in the department of pharmacology gmc ratlam and he is a chairperson in institutional ethic committee gmc dhatia mp and also a member secretary in institutional ethic committee gmc ratlam mp sir is a coordinator of pharmacovigilance committee adr monitoring center kolo collaboration with who gmc ratlam sir is a formal principal investigator in cro for ct phase 1 and ba and be studies he is having more than 18 years experience in the field of clinical pharmacology medical ethics and medical education and research sir had conducted more than 300 clinical trials as investigator in pharmaceuticals sir has published more than 30 original research papers in various national and international journals now i would like to invite sir for his today's session please sir yeah thank you madam thank you sir so, uh, so am i audible yes sir yes, yes sir. sir yeah yeah okay so good evening all of you i am presenting the one of the most important part of uh, medical science this is called basics of medical sciences it is name suggest uh, sorry uh, mainly uh, these are basics of medical image image sciences okay so uh, medical imaging can see so what is medical imaging so you can just if you want what are the uh, you know what are the imaging modalities that has that are available to diagnose monitor or treat medical conditions generally uh, we know uh, as a clinician uh, we everybody knows about what are the basic imaging modalities available in india or globally okay so just i am i can start uh, with my presentation the example of covid 19 okay covid 19 you uh, you have seen so there is a high requirement of two important imaging modalities okay so can you write on chat box uh, if you know the what are the imaging modalities so everybody was there everybody was uh, doing after doing any 
sign and symptom of COVID and he or she was, was rushing for that particular imaging modalities. So uh, yeah, definitely these are first is X-ray. Okay. And uh, everybody is going, yes, chest X-ray, very good, uh, Sonali, I appreciate. And second one, uh, X-ray, if some findings are suggestive in X-ray, then we go for uh, chest X-ray, okay. So in the chest X-ray, there was, uh, yeah, it's not audible. Uh, audible, sir, audible, sir. Audible, sir, audible. Yeah, actually, okay, one participant, uh, is written on chat. Ah, uh, sir, and there may be a network issue at the end. Uh, no problem, sir. It's audible, proper, sir. It's audible. Okay, okay. So, in the COVID nineteen, uh, we have seen the. Uh, if first of all, we do the uh, chest X ray, and uh, some uh, after getting some uh, uh, some uh, complications in the chest X ray, then we we uh, go for the. CT scan. This is definitely uh, minute uh, and uh, that particular changes that has been developed in the lungs that can be detected uh, not by chest x-ray but by CT scans. So then we will do some uh, staging of uh, COVID-19 okay, on the basis of the consolidation. Okay, So this is the uh, consolidation. Consolidation is like uh, what are uh, some opacities that are found in the particular part of the uh, lungs? Then, on the basis of this translucency, or you can say infections, this is called consolidation in the terms of medical. So, then we will find out okay, this type of score happened. Then, we start the treatment on the basis of mild, moderate, and the severe. Okay. Then, first thing, then what happened? Then, after doing the treatment on the basis of the CT scans report, and sign and symptoms and other other parameters also other laboratory parameters then uh, after uh, uh, then we again again do the ct scan after suppose 15 days 20 days then we see that there is a uh, decremental in the scores or it's increasing okay so again it shows the consolidation or the infection or the, the consolidation is not but 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 it's like a fibrosis develop in the lungs. Okay. So ultimately more fibrosis means uh, more lungs compromised and you know very well this is a uh, uh, very more bivital organ uh, the body. So ultimately your prognosis would be pure, poor. Okay. So it, sh it was uh, showing that CT scan score is very much high. So there is less chances of people they are they were dying because of uh, more consolidation more fibrosis in the lungs so you can see you can easily uh, think about this what is medical imaging so medical imaging refers to several different technologies that are used to view interior of the human body okay in order to diagnose okay monitor Okay, we have seen the two cases, diagnose PKI, then we have we beat monitor or treat medical condition. Okay, so some all medical imaging imaging modalities also there. So by which we can treat some condition. Okay, this is called guided guided treatment. Okay, so each type of technology gives different information about the area of the body being studied or treated. So definitely different different modalities uh, discovered. Because of every modality has some uh, advantages or disadvantage, you can see, in, uh, you, you can uh, say like that ki there is some uh, features that are lacking in the particular modality that are not with this. Some are inferior, some are superior. Okay. And different, different uh, on the basis of different, different area and what type of study we want. Okay. On depend on this, when we choose that particular modality. So about the area of the body being studied or treated related to possible disease, okay, injury, and the effectiveness of medical treatment. Okay, so this is the definition. Uh, what what is the uh, utilization in the medical field? So simple terms, you can chest X-ray, ultrasonography. Okay, then. MRI, 
magnet magnetic resonance okay mri and then ct scan okay, computer computer tomography and dsa and mr the different different type of model trees also there so the basically how it works so for medical imaging we use various type of invisible wave forms okay, invisible wave forms like electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves or magnetic field or sound waves so electromagnetic waves there are different type of you can uh, some uh, like x rays okay gamma rays x rays gamma rays so these are some electronic waves which have high intensity okay which has high intensity and low wavelength okay these are electronic waves mainly for the x rays and the so x ray mainly used in the x rays ct scans like that and the gamma rays gamma rays mainly used as a therapeutically in the nuclear medicine okay that is called radio the radiotherapy so these are the electronic electromagnetic second one is a magnetic field that is seen that is uh, used in the mri and the sound waves that is used mainly in the ultrasound so you uh, see here electromagnetic waves magnetic field and sound waves so mainly mainly the children and the pregnant women so the medical imaging which uses the electromagnetic waves so that is harmful to the fetus so hence we avoid it in the but the but the medical imaging which use magnetic field like mri or usg that are say so basic principle of working is the waves or is read from a source placed on one side of the body that travel just imagine whenever you do the x rays waves origin from a source placed on one side of the body this is source travel through the body okay then hit a detector placed on the other side of the body okay and then waves are absorbed to the varying degree by different body tissues so this is the simple mechanism what every medical imaging is based on this method so uses of medical imaging so first as we have discussed most common application of diagnostic okay diagnostic medical imaging for example like plain radiograph like chest x ray and cts helps detect fractures cysts tumors and anomalies of the bone so whenever we do the x rays chest x rays and whenever any fracture occurs so we see in the x rays digital x rays are there clear cut we can we can get a clear cut idea of fractures by the plain Yes, plain radiograph or digital. Okay, so if we need a more minute information, especially in the central nervous system, like cysts, tumors, and some anomalies of the brain bone, then we can go for the CTs. Okay, especially in the carcinoma. Monitoring disease progression. It's used to determine disease stages and progression. So you know, uh, you must know the stages. and progression these two terms are very important in the case of cancer okay because of in the cancer there is stage 1 is stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 metastasis occur then we start the treatment treatment what treatment that is combined modality like chemotherapy or radiotherapy or surgical resections or either pre radiotherapy then further do some surgery then do the chemotherapy so different different type of modality and the combination modalities that uh, that is being conducted in the different different type of cancer and the clinician has to monitor the progression of the disease okay and it shows the effect of the treatment modalities so on the basis of this in a patient with cancer contrast enhanced ct or an mri 
कैन बी यूज टू डिटरमाइन द एग्जैक्ट एग्जैक्ट स्टेज ऑफ द डिजीज वेल पेट स्कैन दिस इज अगेन द एडवांस फॉर्म पेट स्कैन कैन डिटेक्ट एनी मेस्टाइस so these are some modalities uh, that are needed in the advance in the cancer and in the advance stages of the spect pet scan spect this is 3d a type of bone scan has been found useful to monitor progress in parkinson disease so parkinson disease is one of the example where we use the spect or other advanced carcinoma then on the basis of this there is treatment planning definitely it allows surgeons to determine the size of the lesion hence the extent of the surgery before it so definitely it depends uh, the treatment modality or also depend uh, it depends on the these uh, staging or anything which is uh, the result that is found with in the medical imaging Evaluating the efficacy of treatment, PET scans are often used in cancer patient undergoing treatment to check if the treatment regimen has been effective in diminishing the size of the tumor. Definitely evaluating the efficacy. Then age related calculations. Age can be often be determined by assessing growth of the internal body structure. So, age can often be determined by assessing growth of internal body structure. For instance. fetal is so by the ultrasonography you all know very well that we can calculate the age of the fetus the a and we can in the weight in maternal gestational age are often determined so these are some uses of medical imaging we have discussed uh, now types of medical imaging we have discussed the first is radiography this is called well X-ray, yes, X-ray where you use X rays, electromagnetic waves are there. MRI, magnetic re resonance imaging, we use the magnetic field. Okay, then nuclear medicine. Nuclear medicine mainly deals with the uh, mainly deals with the uh, the gamma rays, especially uh, gamma rays, which are source are from nucleus. Okay, gamma rays source are from nucleus. so that deals with mainly the gamma rays nuclear medicine which is a uh, very important part in the cancer or you can see in thyroid gland and ultrasound ultrasound usg is ultrasound which use the sound waves you know elastography is a part of elastography photoacoustic imaging and tomography and then echocardiography echocardiography is again the part of the ultrasound different type of ultrasound which is used in the to detect the cardiac abnormalities functional near infrared spectroscopy that are some advanced newer forms magnetic particle imaging these are some specials so So first of all we can see the radiography this imaging modality used a wide beam of x rays for image acquisition okay so x rays are used it is the first imaging technique available in the modern medicine two forms of radiographic images are in use in medical imaging the first is projection radiography and second is fluoroscopy okay so you uh, all of you aware about this uh, radiography so was the main difference between the fluoroscopy and projection radiography so projection radiography is nothing but just a general x ray what we generally prescribe to the patient whenever uh, we uh, advise to the patient uh, whenever any fractures occur okay or uh, any lung infections occur we just say okay do the radiograph so that pa view posterior anterior view then He or she goes to the department of radiology and then X-ray. Yes. This is a one-time procedure. Okay, but in the fluoroscopy, there is a series of uh, X-rays. Okay, so this is definitely why we need a series of X-rays. Definitely, we need some progression. How the progression of the disease or the process like produce real-time images of internal structure of the body. 
it employs a constant input of x-rays at a lower density definitely because of you know x-rays and ct scan both are both procedure causes uh, they, this is hazardous okay so it's not uh, it's harmful for the patient so because of you are taking the constant inputs of x-ray then it should be in the lower dose rate uh, like you can see you have seen contrast media such as barium iodine and the ALS are used to visualize internal organ as they work so barium meal uh, like some GIT uh, like uh, diseases we use these uh, fluoroscopy uh, for detect some diseases so fluoroscopy is also to see the obstruction in any intestinal obstructions is there we use the this method barium meal or like that so fluoroscopy is also used in the image guided procedure when constant feedback during a procedure is so image guided procedures are required we do the we are doing the procedure with the some fluoroscopy so these are some uh, modern modalities that are available nowadays projection radiograph known as x-ray type and extent of fractures as well as detecting pathological changes in the lung so you everybody knows if there is any pathology in the lung okay you can see the cardiac abnormalities in the gross cardiac abnormalities is occur then you can yeah, do with the uh, pa view of uh, posterior anterior view of x-rays as well as uh, uh, if you want to know some uh, you easily you can detect some uh, lungs abnormalities like any consolidation, tuberculosis, okay, any pulmonary fibrosis, COPD, atelectasis, or pleural effusion. So you can easily do any pathology changes with the use of radiogram opaque contrast media such as barium. They can also be used to visualize the structure of the stomach intestine. This help this can help the diagnosis ulcer or certain type of colon cancer. So these are some two important modalities: the radiography. Now come to the MRI. So MRI is imaging magnetic resonance imaging scanners use powerful magnet to polarize and excite its molecular level hydrogen nuclei of water molecule in human tissue. So don't go this just producing a detective signal which is fatally encoded resulting in images of the uh, body. So this is the uh, mechanism like use we generally use the magnetic Powerful magnets we use in this MRIs. So MRI traditionally created two dimensional image of a thin slice of the body. Okay. So thin slice of the body, two dimensional image is there. So we generally we do the some slices. Whenever we do the central nervous system examination, you know the different if we just cut the slices of head, so different different type of body structure, in the especially in the central nervous system structure visible. So we do the slices of the images, which is in 2D, like not 3D. So there are different type of MRIs like T1 and T2, DWI, DC, MRI. So we need to go in detail because of all has uh, different, different uh, advantage in the some advanced form of MRI. The number of applications of MRI for detecting disease in various organs like liver studies, breast tumors, pancreatic tumors, and assessing the effects of vascular disruptions agents on cancer tumors. So definitely every advanced form of basic medical imaging, uh, sorry, medical imaging that is mainly uh, all mainly used in the, especially the cancer. Okay. But Definitely, they are used in the very important the liver studies as well as some uh, CNS central nervous system is like whenever any any traumatic injury happened like uh, subdural hemorrhage and uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage occur. So, in the study of CNS uh, uh, hematoma formation or any infarct occur due to some cerebral accident like there is there is uh, angina and angina pectoris or myocardial infarction in the heart 
and uh, continuously patient is hypertensive not taking drug properly or due to some any stress and something so there is cerebrovascular accident occur okay that particular thrombi or emboli that reaches into the central nervous system and uh, that block some small vessels arteries and ultimately leads to there is lack of supply of uh, blood or oxygen to the particular field and that particular field become necro necrosis occur or in fact happen that blood that lead to the some disability or disease of particular organ particular limb like you you can see this is the cerebral accident cerebrovascular accident then we generally do the mri so we, whenever we need a minute uh, detection of any abnormality we go for the mri you must know mri is very costly you need some proper setting required for this so this is also available in mainly in the tertiary care hospitals or any advanced centers especially in the two to three tier cities not available in the villages and like that. so uh, this is the thing with the mri then nuclear medicine as i mentioned nuclear medicines encompasses the both diagnostic and the treatment imaging it uses certain properties of the isotopes okay and energetic particles emitted from the radioactive material to diagnose or treat various pathology so in the nuclear medicine it's a in the uh, medical science uh, the nuclear medicine and radiotherapy okay and uh, uh, chemotherapy you can say radiotherapy or the cancer dm in cancer md in nuclear medicine md in radiotherapy or md in radio diagnosis so all three or four separate branches in the medical science so nuclear medicine which basically deals with the uh with the uh, some electromagnetic waves we have discussed x rays the second one is gamma rays gamma rays is the source of origin from the nucleus okay so it mainly deals with the diagnostic as well as treatment so it uses certain properties of isotopes and energetic particles emitted from the radioactive material to diagnose or treat various pathology so there are three type three important type of uh imaging included in the nuclear medicine the first is scintigraphy second is spect or third is the pet pet scan you can see you, you must uh, heard so scintigraphy is a form of diagnostic test where wherein radio isotopes are taken internally for example intravenously or orally so there is radio isotopes available that is given through uh, as a iv intravenous or orally then gamma cameras captures and form two dimensional image from the radiation emitted by that particular radio pharmaceuticals so that radiation that is emitted by that particular radio, radio pharmaceuticals it is called radio pharmaceutical because of it is working like a it is working like a uh, drug okay definitely it's a foreign body so then it is the x ray type gamma cameras which capture the that images that emitted so this scintigraphy is mainly used to diagnose stage or the monitor of it so you can see the best uh, example of this is the thyroid disease in the thyroid carcinoma so there is a iodine 31 31 that is used as a treatment modality modality so scintigraphy the second is a spect spect is a 3d ct scan this is ct scan 3d tomographic technique that uses gamma camera data it is tomographic technique that uses gamma camera data from many projections and can be reconstructed in different planes the patient is injected with a radio isotopes most commonly thallium technetium 99 and the iodine and gallium so mainly nuclear medicine and definitely there is a radio isotopes were used the radioactive gamma rays are emitted through the body which are captured and by detector that surrounded the body spect scanning can detect altered blood flow in the brain and help diagnose or evaluate certain vascular so again this is a advanced form of uh, this is a advanced form of uh, ct scan like okay so minute details 
what generally what we need that we can take with the spec okay so there is many projection and it's a 3d technique so this is again important the third one is the pt positron em emission tomography the spet scan mainly used in the cancer so pet scan it's a co use coincidence detection to image functional processes short lived po positrons emitting isotopes such as F is incorporated with an organic substance such as glucose so don't go so much in detail which can be used as a marker of metabolic utilization so mainly just you remember the PET scans, SPECT, these are scintigraphy, these are mainly used for the to diagnose or treat various pathology which mainly involve the isotopes. Okay. So uh, this PET scan, it is mainly used to the uh, rapidly growing tissues like tumor, metastasis or infection. Then easily we can get the idea about the uh, progression of the tumors, progression of the carcinoma, cancer. In ultrasound, it's used high frequency broadband sound waves in the megahertz. You have seen the ultrasound that are reflected by the tissue to varying degree to produce image. That is 2D image, but up to 3D you can see. Okay, not 3D exactly, but it's two to, between 2 to 3. Two to three. So, bearing degree to produce images, it's used for imaging the fetus in pregnant women or it's a, you know, it's a gold standard for, uh, for diagnosis of abdominal pain. So, you can imaging any abdominal, ultrasound, abdomen, abdominal organs, then heart, breast, and the muscles, tendons, and arteries and the veins. Okay. So, this technique use, it may provide less anatomical detail than techniques such as CT or MRI. So, you must, uh, that ultrasound mainly be used for the detecting the abdominal structures, okay, like cholecystitis, there is stones, renal stones are there, the stones, gallbladder stones are there, appendicitis, or any intestinal obstructions, or you, uh, you can see there is some uh, liver pathology, fatty liver and like that, or it is mainly used the pregnant female to see the fetus, the growth of the fetus, okay, and there is a advanced ultrasonography at the 18th one to detect all the path, all the uh, normal uh, growth of the fetus. So this is mainly used in the ultrasound. If you go for more uh, uh, minute or more uh, fine details, anatomical details, then you go, you will go for CT or so in example, uh, you can you uh, see there is uh, ligament injuries, uh, they are common in the knee areas, so you go for, go for MRI after not X-ray. So MRI gives a clear cut which type of how uh, which type of meniscal ligament injury or cruciate ligament injury occurred in the joint it has several advantages which makes it ideal in numerous situations because of you know uh, the ct and mri okay so it's a just a procedure ct just happened mri just happened okay but in the ultrasound, uh, you see the, it's a continuous process, okay. So the sonologist, he, he or she was do, doing, he she is doing the ultrasound, okay. And they have controlled what part you want to see, okay. On the basis of the clinical sign and symptom of the patient, the sonologist asked the patient, okay, what the problem, so he, he told this type of problem, then this type of problem, then on the basis of this and on the basis of that instruction written in the prescription and the sound losses to the ultrasound but he has control to do so which makes an ideal in situation in particular that it studies the function of moving structure in real time emits no hygiene the most important one the best uh, thing with the ultrasound is that there is no ionizing radiation so there is no harm harmful to the fetus or to the patient. The high frequency sound waves are sent into the tissue depending on the composition of different tissues. 
सिग्नल विल बी अट्यूनेटेड और रिटर्न एट द सेपरेट इंटरवल दिस इज द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ अल्ट्रासाउंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस इमेज डेवलप्ड तो डॉपलर अल्ट्रासाउंड दिस इज द न्यूअर न्यूअर लेटेस्ट वर्जन डॉपलर अल्ट्रा कैपेबिलिटीज ऑन मॉडर्न स्कैनर्स अलाउ द ब्लड फ्लो इन द आर्टरीज एंड वेन टू बी असेस्ड सो मूविंग थिंग्स दैट डन बाय द डॉपलर स्टडी इज आल्सो डन इन द केस ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ पैथोलॉजी इन द आर्टरीज इन द so then elastography it's a relatively new amazing modalities so mainly it maps the elastic properties of the soft tissues okay. elastic properties it's useful in medical diagnosis as elasticity can discern healthy from unhealthy tissues definitely elastic elasticity is decreased as the age increases so unhealthy tissues uh, and for especially specific growth or example just cancerous tumors will often be harder than the surrounding tissues the diseased liver definitely stiffer than the healthy so on the basis of the principle of elasticity so there are different different type of uh, branch ultrasonography elasto it's a type of ultrasound usg so include many like exquisite elastography strain imaging shear wave elasticity acoustic radiations so different different types of supersonic on transient different different branches of ultrasonography elastography so mainly elastography is used to diagnose fatty liver disease and the fibrosis so mainly studies in the liver disease photo acoustic image it's a recently developed uh, hybrid biomedical imaging modality based on the photo acoustic effect combines the advantages of optical absorption contrast with an ultrasonic spatial resolution for deep imaging in diffusive or quasi diffusive regime this is advanced version of uh, these modalities that can be used in view for tumor especially these mainly newer modalities uh, so basic jo general pathology general pathology or general uh, disease that can be easily diagnosed and treated by the uh, simple modalities if we go generally the advanced modalities mainly uh, used in the cancer okay so different different type of cancer and different different type of pathologies and to get a clear cut idea for the clinician or the surgeon to do the combined modalities in the cancer patient so can be used in vivo for tumor angiogenesis monitoring blood oxygenation mapping functional brain imaging like it is mainly the alzheimer disease or you can parkinson's disease okay so some age related imaging there are neurodegeneration neurodegenerative disease so be used and the skin melanoma who like cancer and these are some advanced imaging used for the then ct scan the tomography is the imaging by sections or sectioning x ray ct or computed axial tomography pet scan cat scan the same thing is helical tomography technique which traditionally produces 2d images of the structure in a thin section of the body so in ct a beam of x ray spine spins around an object being exam examined and is picked up by sensitive radiation detectors after having penetrated the object from multiple angles to so diagnose muscles and bone disorders such as bone tumor and the fracture so again uh, again knowledge we need especially in the tumors and the fractures we go for ct scan so ct is a x ray computed over again x ray same uh, magnet electromagnetic waves are used which is harmful to the patient positron emission pet scan this is cat scan the first is used in the conjunction with com computer tomography pet ct and mri mri pet ct or positron emission it have to identify variety of condition include cancer heart disease and that so this is advanced form and we need the advanced studies of any disease mri scan helps to diagnose a variety of condition on ligament to mri is a very useful example brain and spinal cord we have discussed about mri echocardiography again any cardiac abnormalities like chf congestive heart failure 
the other abnormalities happen the sizes so in the mid ball petrol ball or tricuspid ball there are different different valve valves are there so in any pathology in the valves then so if you want to get the all the of the related to part that is done with the echocardiography so echocardiography is nothing when ultrasound is used to image the heart it referred to as echocardiogram so again like the the clean uh, the sonologist he to the echocardiography okay so this is the subjective form so what what the sonologist see at that time and he or she make the report so echocardiography uses 2D, 3D and the Doppler imaging to create pictures of the heart and visualize the blood flowing through each of four heart valves. Okay. On the, on the basis of this, then he do the, he interpreted the results, interpreted and then make the results. It helps to diagnose heart conditions, congestive heart failures. The patient arrhythmia develops so you can see the what any other especially the the fibrosis develop especially in the valves that can be done with the that can be easily seen with the echocardiography this is the advanced form of functional near infrared spectroscopy use the purpose of functional neuroimaging it has been widely accepted as a brain imaging techniques. So it measures blood oxygenation changes. So these mainly used for the neurodegenerative changes, old age changes. And uh, so this is the advanced form of imaging. This is called functional near infrared spectroscopy. And magnetic particle imaging, it's a developing, developing diagnostic imaging technique used for tracking super paramagnetic iron ox oxide nanoparticles. The newer forms like of these basic. So, thank you, all of you. If you have any question, please write in chat or hello. Yes, yeah. yes, sir. If any question is there, so yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your knowledgeable and interactive session. And I hope that participants get benefited for today's session. Now I request participants that please raise your hand and write your query in chat box. Dr. Rajni Thakur. Dr. Rajni Thakur. Good evening, sir. Good evening. And happy Republic Day, sir. All of you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, uh, sir, I wanted to tell you a little bit use the eye scan. Tell me about it. Eye is actually the uh, eyes uh, uh, it's a separate uh, topic, I think, because of we need uh, in the uh, eyes, you can, you, you, you know, the field, visual fields are there. Some so author. B, B scan, A scan. Sorry? B scan, A scan. Which, uh, ab, I no, 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 no. Actually, we, actually, uh, today's topic is mainly basic uh, imaging modalities. So, mainly we focused on the uh, uh, common imaging procedures that is uh, ultrasonography, CT scans, MRIs and the pulse oh, of this. So actually uh, I, I didn't include uh, this because of this a uh, specialization. Uh, so I think uh, today topic not relevant to this. Okay, sir, sir, I thought, let's go, we don't know, we don't know. Okay, actually, uh, for this, we have to actually uh, need a ophthalmology, the, the person who is uh, MS in ophthalmology. Only general mayors or uh, yeah, I yeah. just <laughs> wanted to know that only. Not I didn't include this, sorry, ma'am. 
ओके सर थैंक यू सर नो मैटर डॉक्टर गीता प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ मैं बता रहा हूँ आई थिंक हाउस को भाई का भी एंड आस्क योर क्वेरी हेलो यस सर नमस्ते पूछिए सर जैसे हम लोग प्रैक्टिस करते हैं तो हमारे पास एनोरेक्टल के पेशेंट ज्यादा आते हैं जी सर जहाँ मैंने पीजी करी थी बी से तो वहाँ पर सर लोग जो कॉम्प्लिकेटेड फिस्टुला होते थे उनमें एमआरआई करवाते थे जी तो सर जैसे आपने बताया कि एमआरआई सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम या ब्रेन के लिए बेटर है तो फिर हमें सिटी पे जाना MRI it is mainly mainly used. Well, the means majority of the cases, okay. But uh, you can use an app. So, CT scan and MRI. CT scan, there is an X-ray. I mean, uh, magnetic in the MRI. We use the magnetic field, okay. So every the minute information, the fine information of any part of the body. that can be detected by mri okay that is feasible because of it's very costly na so you can't do if other modalities they work there so mm-hmm. why go for the mri okay so for the mri we generally uh, if the clinic that the other modalities are not in life properly diagnosing the thing then we go for the mri ये सर हम कॉम्प्लिकेटेड फिस्टुला या रिकरेंट फिस्टुला होते थे उनमें करवाते थे एमआरआई हां तो बिल्कुल आप जब क्लिनिशियन को लग रहा है कि बिकॉज़ ऑफ एक्चुअली इट्स अ कॉल ऑफ क्लिनिशियन ओके सो जस्ट इट्स अ एक्चुअली दिस इज नॉट अ क्लिनिकल ब्रांच द रेडियोलॉजी इज अ नॉन क्लिनिकल ब्रांच व्हाट द क्लिनिशियन टोल्ड टेल जस्ट इंस्ट्रक्ट और एडवाइस टू द इन द प्रेस्क्रिप्शन देन ही डू ओके so if the patient is uh, afford the mri so no problem okay, definitely uh, the uh, mri uh, will give the more idea more uh, uh, idea about that particular pathology it special day let us okay sir thank you sir thank you okay just i would like to add one important thing the risk benefit analysis and the is as a pharmacologist i will just go for pharmacoeconomics okay so if like just uh, i am giving one example like the patient of hyperthyroidism we give the the person who go to the one clinician and he prescribe And the second one, the doctor A prescribes some drugs and doctor B prescribes some drug. So doctor A prescribes the drug which cost only fifty hundred rupees per month. Okay, and the another doctor have he prescribes some drugs which cost around three thousand per month. Okay, so then you just uh, calculate the cost of the therapy. This is called pharmacoeconomics. whenever you see the prescription you will get to know the major the major to be most of the most important drug which is used is a carimazole okay so 10 tablets comes in 2 to 3 rupees okay and the second drug which is the antioxidant one capsule the cost of one capsule is 80 rupees you know so you can see that uh, you can see that and the second the uh, the, the uh, a physician uh, he didn't write the antioxidant he generally simply he add some bicasul capsule or vitamin b capsule so the patient the doctor has to take the decision if the patient can afford or not so if the you just said the complicated stula or anorectal pathology if we do the mri the patient can afford or not that is important thank you thank you sir so i hope that all questions will be answered 
if there is remaining any query you can mail us i left the mail id in the chat box now i would like to introduce today's chairperson dr uma gupta ma'am hello hello dr uma gupta ma'am is a vice chairperson in institutional ethic committee government autonomous medical college ratlam mp and principal investigator under women scientist scheme component of department of science and technology dst department of pharmacology government medical college ratlam mp and she is a former consultant microbiologist in idsp national center for disease control and cdc delhi ministry of health and family welfare government of india ma'am is having more than 12 years post graduate experience in basic clinical research clinical laboratory clinical research and epidemiological investigation ma'am has published more than 20 original research papers in various national and international journals now i would like to request dr uma gupta ma'am to kindly share your views and sum up today's session welcome ma'am please okay thank you thank you for nice introduction and good evening to all and uh, happy republic day uh, and uh, it's my pleasure to chair this session today's uh, dr neeraj it was very nice and knowledgeable session and very informative session hello am i audible yeah yeah, yeah. yes ma'am yes ma'am audible ma'am okay okay and uh, dr neeraj you elaborate all the uh, diagnostic tools in ayurveda in very such a nice way and very understandable way i think all participant has understood very well all these techniques and uh, i would like to say that uh, like uh, in uh, previous era also some tools also were used in ayurveda like uh, nadi tantra like that but nowadays uh, so many modern diagnostic tools has come up uh, so in ayurveda status of improvement after treatment need to be assessed through these tools and the treatment outcome is to be analyzed in order to minimize various complications and to put data on prognosis so these tools are also useful in ayurvedic science also so thank you uh, thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you for your sharing your views and summarizing the session thank you on the behalf of institute of applied statistics i wish you a very happy republic day to all on this special day let us make a promise to strive for justice freedom and equal rights for every indian and for peace and unity among all who are fortunate enough to live in this glorious nation now on behalf of the institute of applied statistics we convey our sincere thanks to all participants for their active participation during the session we heartily thanks today's resource person dr neeraj kumar agarwal sir for a very interactive session and also thanks to dr uma gupta ma'am for chairing today's session now this is a end of today's session again thanks to everyone thank you